Good evening and welcome to another edition of Angry Taxpayer. I'm your host, Donna Smyrniotopoulos, and today is Saturday, October the 26th. I think we can all identify with that special feeling when something wonderful arrives in the mail. Many of us wait with anticipation to open our mailboxes every day. I know I do, even though most of the communication, most of my correspondence is, is electronic these days, I still look forward to opening the mailbox. And I want to share with you the special something that I got in my mailbox today. So here it is. This came in the mail today, and pardon my face peering in underneath, and I, I want you, while you're looking at this, check out these nails. All right, check out these nails, check out these nails. My girl Jenny at Posh Spa Darien did the spider web nail job. But look at this card I got in the mail today. I, I don't know, is this targeted mailing? I can't imagine it is. And here is the beautiful reverse of that mailing from Mayor Rilling, his campaign mailing that came direct to my door via the U.S. Post Office. Isn't that something? So now let's talk about what Mayor Rilling has to say in his mailing. I found it of great interest uh, I've always enjoyed a good fantasy, and uh, that's pretty much what he's offering here. Norwalk is thriving, okay? Showed you that before. Norwalk is thriving. Well, I guess it depends on, on your point of view. If you define thriving by constant construction, uh, the constant addition of traffic to the roads, much of it in the form of construction vehicles, but also uh, the new people who are, are living here, uh, we are adding a tremendous amount of density. Remember from the debate, density was the word of the night from the mayor. Density, good. Uh, Non-density, bad, seemed to be his theme. And uh, there was another phrase that he used, urban core. I'm not really sure he knows exactly what urban core means because Norwalk has, it's a decentralized city. So we have the downtown, which is the Wall Street area uh, connected to West Ave at one end and East Ave at the other end. We have uh, Sono which is basically Washington Street and a few other side streets, Water, Water Street and so forth, the Maritime Aquarium. And then there is the whole Main Avenue corridor and, and Merit 7. So we are completely decentralized. There are a lot of wonderful neighborhoods. Cranberry is, is fairly open. It's, I believe, mostly one acre and maybe even some two acre zoning. Silvermine is similar, not urbanized. I live in South Norwalk. South Norwalk is fairly urbanized and it was when I got here. I happen to live in an actual neighborhood, but the homes are close together, the lots are small. So the kind of density that the mayor's talking about is, is pretty much alien to Norwalk and has been alien to Norwalk. Mayor Reeling speaks in a lot of platitudes and, and euphemisms. So he says economic development underway across the city. You can't really put a definition on this. Uh, what are the numbers? Where is the economic development? If we were doing so well, why did my taxes go up 40%? Really, uh, you don't have to ask that question. Hundreds of new businesses with good paying jobs for residents. Again, extremely vague. Show me those businesses. What I see are businesses closing. I see restaurants not able to survive on Washington Street because it's a combination of the rents are too high and, and then they have to charge more for whatever it is they're selling and people can't afford it. And for all these new people who are coming here, they are not keeping these restaurants going. So th this is part of the, the fantasy literature that is coming out of the mayor's office, coming out of City Hall, that somehow adding hundreds and thousands of apartments is actually helping businesses. And who are you gonna believe, the mayor or your lying eyes? Harlan Public closed, Cask Republic closed. Many other businesses closed. Connie B's had to go up the road, and guess who's in Connie B's spot right now? The Democratic candidates. And guess what? They don't have a permit. So I guess if if the deal in Norwalk is you can open any business whenever you want to, and you you don't need a permit, I think we probably would be thriving. But the sad truth is small business owners, people who would like to open businesses, have a very hard time getting through the red tape at City Hall. But I guess if you're the mayor and, and you know you have a slate behind you of Democrats who vote your way and you know follow you in lockstep, I guess you, you can occupy without a permit. So um, there are real advantages to being a mayor, not the least of which is uh, the third pension he's working on. Okay, now this is just pure fantasy implemented a comprehensive strategy to shift the tax burden from homeowners to the commercial base 
through economic development. Again, it's meaningless. There are no specifics there. There are no numbers there. And it, it is not, it did not show up in my tax bill. There are 1,600 appeals. There are 400 court cases uh, based on the 2018 revaluation, which in the opinion of many, many people was botched. And in consequence of which two people at City Hall were forced to resign, Michael Stewart and uh, Bill O'Brien, who were the tax assessors. So there's just no information there. And I think, I think Harry uh, believes that we're stupid. And uh, well, this is, you know, he's, he's going on term number four. So maybe, maybe we really are that stupid. Maybe we believe this. We read what he's, uh, what's been printed here on this red card in bold letters, and we think that it's true. Okay, grand list growth every year. Well, if you're, you've given your um, consultants, the team that you hired, in this case, Tyler Technologies, if they've been given the directive to grow the grand list, then they're gonna grow the grand list. So when you tout grand list growth, it actually has to be based on something real. And again, as I just said, there are 1,600 appeals. So once those go through, we're gonna see a very different story. We're not gonna have that 12% growth that the mayor bragged about at the debate. And uh, it's been as high as, it, you know, if you listen to Mike Muschak, we had 16% growth. No, we don't have that growth. We don't know what growth we're gonna have until after the, um, the appeals are finished. And for commercial properties that are worth more than a million dollars, those are all court cases because we simply do not have people on the Board of Assessment Appeals who are qualified to handle commercial appeals. All right, and here is my favorite, strong financial management. Mayor Rilling has kept taxes and spending under control. I mean, that's just horseshit. I'm sorry, Harry, but that's a lie. Uh, you know, you, you lost a million dollars under your watch through accounts payable. That is not a sign of strong fiscal management. And in fact, people told you what you needed to do at accounts payable. You needed a wet signature. You never implemented it because you don't want to listen to anybody who wants to give you help. You think that you, you, know, you have this go it alone attitude and, uh, you know, God bless you. It's worked for you, uh, you know, a couple times because again, the voters, they just don't know. Some people don't even know who's running for office. People don't know when election day is. And, and you'd kind of like it that way. I remember two years ago, I asked the uh, lovely Republican registrar of voters, the talented and beautiful and gentle Karen Doyle Lyons, if the city was planning to send out a mailer, a sample ballot. And she said no, that they just didn't have the spare $10,000 to do this. And yet, and yet you had $77,000 to appropriate for embedded thermal tile rainbow crosswalks to make, I don't know, pander to who, I don't know, because it's not like the LGBTQ community doesn't pay taxes. So it's pretty cynical on the part of whoever dreamed this up and thought that this, you know, we're, we're gonna pitch to this, this particular audience and they spent a lot of money and that's gonna make them vote for us. I mean, I think it's cynical because I think that any smart business owner, regardless of their sexual orientation, is gonna worry about the bottom line first and your rainbow crosswalk second. And we could have painted a perfectly beautiful rainbow crosswalk and it could have been a community event. We all could have joined in. And that's how you show tolerance and inclusiveness and diversity. You don't do it by stealing money out of the taxpayer's pocket in order to make yourself look good before an election. Now, there's some other interesting deeds here. We have from the Norwalk Hour, Norwalk Development Projects on Display. Well, again, it doesn't mean anything. It's not good or bad or indifferent. Uh, I believe that these projects are the uh, Washington Village Soundview Landing Project. The jury is still out on that, and, and there's a rumor that Trinity Financial has run out of money, which is kind of a shame because they got $30 million from Housing and Urban Development through Choice Neighborhood Initiative, and they got at least another $30 million from the state. There are all kinds of low-income housing tax credits baked into this project. I walk by there frequently. Um, I have to tell you, I don't think the quality is that great. Um, Washington Village kind of stood the test of time. It was there for 70 years. And aside from the mold mitigation issue, you know, had they been able to address that and not defer the maintenance uh, over years, they might have been able to save those buildings. This project isn't going to last 20 years. I predict in 20 years it is going to be shot to, to the ground. It's going to be shot to shit. And guess what? The people who live there are going to be blamed. Um, you know, so you've seen it happen before. And, you know, is this redlining? I don't know. It sure looks like it to me because a lot of people who were longtime residents of Washington Village missed the boat on uh, the lottery. Whose genius idea was that? Was it Adam Bovilsky's? Was it the mayor's? Who knows? 
but I don't think you tell 400 pound lady who has agoraphobia, you don't tell the 80 year old guy that, uh, you know, come stand in line and see if you're lucky and get the lottery for your Section 8 voucher. So, you know, completely disingenuous to tout this as some sort of a triumph. And then a quote from Chris Murphy, the transit oriented development projects here are amazing. It's transformational. Well, whose party do you belong to, Chris? I mean, come on. We see right through you. You did nothing for us on Fire Tree. People in Quintard know what you're about. So, you know, you like to get your face on CNN, but uh, what, what are you bringing back to the state? We need $2 million to educate all these kids who came in over the past month or so. These are, this is a high needs population. Show us the money. Where's that Title, IX, uh, Title I money that the mayor said he was gonna ask you for? Nobody's seen it yet. Now, I wanna take you back to the reverse of this because this kind of stuff burns me up. And again, I, f I feel it's just pandering uh, that the mayor is posed here. It says, you know, in highlights Trinity Financial. Trinity Financial is going to make out big in this. These nice African-American people here who probably he recruited, they're either friends or, uh, you know, he just, gra you know, like told his campaign manager, the campaign manager probably more likely told him, could you bring me some some African-Americans from South Norwalk so it looks like I'm actually taking care of this neighborhood because people on the ground in South Norwalk, they know that isn't so, all right? I live here, I talk to people, I walk in the neighborhoods and they know that he is not taking care of these neighborhoods. So for me, this strikes me as very cynical, maybe it's genuine, but there's so much bullshit on the other side of this that I kind of, you know, in the, in the direction of very cynical to make it look like you're actually taking care of black folk in South Newark because they know better. And let me tell you just one example of how and why they know better. In 2013, Mayor Rilling had a press conference. He was, he was uh, you know, ex-police chief Rilling at the time. I believe he was on the zoning commission and he was running against Mayor Richard Moshe. And he stood on Woodward Avenue around 110, 112 Woodward where the sidewalks were in terrible condition. And he decried the state of the infrastructure. And he used those sidewalks as an example of how terrible the infrastructure was and how it was unsafe. And he said, this is a quality of life issue for the city of Norwalk. I walked there a few weeks ago. I have photographs of those sidewalks. They were in deplorable condition. They were six years worse than they were when Mayor Rilling campaigned there on that issue of uh, quality of life and infrastructure and the quality of the sidewalks. So he did nothing for six years. He did nothing. He talked about it. He campaigned on it. He didn't do anything except last week. He contacted, he has two favorite contractors for, for paving. Grasso is one, Daring is the other one. And he said, I'm just assuming here, speculating, Daring, throw some asphalt on top of these sidewalks and make the potholes and the cracks and the grass go away. And that's exactly what he did. And in fact, they even put a picture of it, the side by side on uh, the city's Facebook page. And it's a piece of crap. It's it, the crappiest job you could possibly do. We spent money on it because we do have to pay the contractor. I think the contractor knew it was crap. I think they knew it when they were doing it, that you know, this is a crap job we're doing here. And if we get the bid to do the sidewalks when the streets are due to be repaved, we're gonna have to pull this shit up. All right, we're gonna to have to dig it up. We're gonna damage people's driveways. We're gonna to have to pay them for the damage. I mean, you have to go by there and walk those streets just to see how bad it is. But this isn't how you treat people, Harry. It's not how you treat people. You know, you just kind of like fudge it and uh, put a little icing on top and, and you know, get, get the right people, get the right demographic in your pictures. And I guess because of South Norwalk, you, you wanna you know, try and pitch to the African-American community. I think a lot of people in that community they know your time is up, you know? I mean, they know what happened at Washington Village. They know that, you know, they wanted to have a neighborhood school and you wouldn't give it to them. And not only would you not give it to them, but you took away their park, you took away Springwood Park, and you tried to replace it with, uh, you know, new open space by the community college, which actually wasn't new because we already had it. So that was another, you know, act of cynical BS. Tom Livingston helped you with that, apparently. So the rumor goes. So uh, I think people are onto you in South Norwalk. And uh, guess what? I have seen two signs in all of South Norwalk and I, I'm all over the place here. In the poorest neighborhoods, there are zero railing for mayor signs, zero. 
The only thing you can hope for in District B is that people don't vote. Because if they vote, they're not gonna vote for you. Mark my words, Harry, your ship has sailed. Uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but you could start by being genuine, by being honest. And I haven't seen that. You don't take help when it's offered. You make stuff up. You made it up during the debate. You made it up on this card that came in the mail. And, uh, you know, I, I hope people hang you out to dry this year because it, your time is up. And, you know, it may be too late to save the city because you did a lot of damage in six years, but, but I hope that the voters wake up and they send you packing. And there are some nice places. Uh, I recommend Maryland, Delaware, Florida. They can use an ex-cop, a retired cop. Uh, you know, you, you might find that you enjoy your retirement. So guys, this was a truly ang angry taxpayer episode. I didn't do any fancy videos today. You're just getting me, sorry to say so. Uh, but hopefully I'll come back with another video soon. And I hope you have a great weekend. Ta-ta for now.